Hello, my name is David MacArthur. I'm a consultant general and colorectal surgeon working in Birmingham and Solihull. Uh, my main NHS practice is at University Hospitals Birmingham and I have a private practice in Solihull and Birmingham. So in this context, uh, a hernia is where there is a defect in the abdominal wall muscles. Uh, we've all got natural points of weakness in our abdominal wall and uh, these natural points of weakness can lead on to uh, a defect developing where it allows things to bulge out from inside the abdominal cavity. The most common area we see hernias is in the groin and these are called inguinal hernias. Um, there's a normal structure called the inguinal canal which in men allows the passage of the vessels that supply the testicle to come from the inside of the abdomen to the outside in the scrotum. And the inguinal canal can become stretched up over time and, and that allows things to bulge out through it and that's what an inguinal hernia is. Uh, there are certain things that lead on to hernias developing and make them more likely. Uh, they are common, that's the first thing to say, and, and more often than not they're not serious, um, but they can cause various symptoms. The things that cause hernias to develop include anything that increases the pressure inside the abdomen. So people that cough a lot, strain when they go to the toilet or do heavy lifting. Um, they can also occur as the muscular wall of the abdomen gets weaker over time. Um, but they, they are common throughout all stages of life. We see them commonly in sports people uh, and also old people. So, uh, so that's what they are. Inguinal hernias are more common in men than women. Um, and, and we decide whether to operate on them depending on the symptoms that they cause. Um, so that's what an inguinal hernia is. Surgery for inguinal hernias is intended to repair the hernia um, and take away the symptoms that patients might get from that hernia. Uh, essentially, there are two ways that we can repair hernias. We can either do, either do a, a conventional open repair um, or a keyhole repair, laparoscopic repair. Um, the two repairs are by and large the same in, in a lot of ways. Most people who perform inguinal hernia surgery perform a mesh repair, uh, where a mesh, a synthetic mesh made uh, of a plastic type material, polypropylene usually, uh, is placed in the abdominal wall musculature uh, to reinforce the area. Um, it's important to stress the way that meshes work um, and it's not the mesh itself that necessarily gives the majority of the strength to the repair, rather the body's reaction to the mesh. Uh, and your body creates a lot of scar tissue around the mesh, uh, and that's what creates the strength to the repair. Um, in terms of keyhole repairs, um, we can do those uh, for inguinal hernias, uh, as we can for other hernias. And there are various reasons that we look at doing keyhole repairs over open repairs. Um, the main reasons that, that the main indications for inguinal hernia surgery to be performed using keyhole surgery include people who have hernias on both sides, so we, we call those bilateral inguinal hernias, and in that case to do an open repair would need an incision on both groins, whereas for a keyhole repair we can make three small incisions higher up on the abdomen and repair both from inside the abdomen at the same time, and that speeds recovery. And the other main indication is for people who have a recurrent inguinal hernia, having had open surgery previously, where there would be lots of scar tissue to go back through uh, should you try a further open repair. So they're the two main indications, although people with a primary unilateral hernia, so a one-sided hernia where it's the first time that they've had it, can also have it repaired uh, using keyhole surgery. Um, and there are pros and cons to keyhole surgery and open surgery. So as previously discussed in another answer, there are two ways to repair inguinal hernias, both open and keyhole or laparoscopic. Um, both have advantages and disadvantages. We generally perform both procedures on most patients as day case procedures and usually for most patients under general anaesthetic. For a keyhole repair, it is mandated that they have to have a general anaesthetic to allow relaxation of the abdominal wall. Uh, for some people, uh, they can have an open repair performed under a local anaesthetic. So there is a difference there. In terms of the pros and cons of both, 
the recovery after keyhole surgery is thought to be somewhat quicker than uh, after open surgery, but it really does depend uh, from patient to patient. Uh, and we do some hernia repairs on patients where they might have a very large hernia that's repaired open and uh, they make a very speedy recovery with minimal pain postoperatively. Uh, and then conversely, some people who have a keyhole repair might have a bit more postoperative pain. So it does vary from person to person. Uh, but by and large, the, the recovery is quicker after keyhole surgery. The downsides of keyhole surgery are that there is a reported uh, increased recurrence rate compared to open surgery. And it's in the order of about one in 200 uh, operations that get a recurrence after an open hernia and maybe up to one in a hundred after a keyhole repair. So the, the longevity of the repair is, is slightly less uh, for keyhole surgery, um, although the recurrence rates are still low uh, and performed appropriately, it is a good operation for patients. Um, and we would normally discuss with the patient in clinic, both forms of repair, go through the pros and cons of both uh, and come to a conclusion as to which type of surgery is best for that patient. So for a keyhole surgical repair of an inguinal hernia, the operation is carried out under general anaesthetic and it's usually performed as a day case. So most patients will come into the hospital on the day of their surgery. They will be seen and assessed by both the anaesthetist and the surgeon and then taken to theatre where they will receive a general anaesthetic from the anaesthetist. Uh, the procedure itself involves placing three small incisions on the abdominal wall, one near the umbilicus and two either side of the umbilicus, which allows us to place small ports through the abdominal wall. One allows us to put a camera inside the abdomen and the other two allow us to place uh, operating instruments with inside the abdominal cavity. And in essence, we create a space in the abdominal wall where the hernia is and pull the hernia back into the abdomen, reduce the hernia, and then place a synthetic mesh in that layer of the abdominal wall, which is secured usually with some dissolvable tacks before closing the, the innermost layer of the abdominal wall. The procedure itself usually takes about 30 to 40 minutes for a single side, and maybe up to 45 minutes for a double-sided hernia. It does depend a little bit on how large the hernia is as to the length of the surgery. And then once the, the surgery is completed, patients are taken to recovery, they wake up, and usually within about three or four hours, they are comfortable enough uh, to, to go home. Uh, the main determinants of them going home are uh, being safe following the anaesthetic, and also passing urine, uh, as it's recognized that during hernia surgery and after surgery, uh, one of the issues that can arise, particularly in men, is that they can go into what we call retention of urine while they, where they can't pass urine adequately. So that's one of the prerequisites for them going home. And then we advise them once they go home to be active, to be up and about, to uh, mobilise, uh, do all their normal activities as they can with, uh, within the constraints of the discomfort that they might have postoperatively, which they will be given painkillers for. We do, however, advise people to, to not do anything strenuous. So that would include gym, uh, golfing, that sort of thing. Anything that will place significant strain on the abdominal cavity, uh, increase the intra-abdominal pressure for about six weeks after the surgery. And that allows the mesh to become integrated into the body, the scar tissue to develop around the, the mesh and the strength uh, for the hernia repair to, to be adequate for them to then uh, get on with those activities safely without uh, a significant risk of the hernia coming back again. Following a keyhole or laparoscopic inguinal hernia operation, uh, patients are sent home usually on the same day. Um, their recovery thereafter does vary from patient to patient and we see some patients who are incredibly comfortable immediately post-operatively. Um, and I've had at least one patient who comes to mind who told me uh, against my advice a little bit that he was out riding his bike the day after his surgery. Um, some patients find that they are a bit more uncomfortable, either generally in the abdomen from where the gas has been inside the abdominal cavity for the keyhole repair, um, or more specifically in the groin where the hernia was. And, and that discomfort can, uh, can last for a varying amount of time from person to person. 
but most people are, are comfortable uh, within a, a few days. Um, most people can drive uh, within about a week. Um, we do advise people uh, that with respect to driving that they should do it when they're comfortable enough to get in and out of a car and and do an emergency stop safely and we always advise people to contact their insurer to make sure that uh, they're aware that they've had an operation um, and then thereafter their recovery sort of progresses and most people find that they become more comfortable uh, day by day uh, and then when we see people back in clinic after six weeks the majority of our patients um, are at a stage where they're back doing all their normal activities and we uh, allow them to get on with anything more strenuous such as gym activity or uh, physical exertion, lifting heavy objects, that sort of thing. Um, I think it's important to emphasise that although the majority of our patients have very, very good outcomes, do very well after their hernia surgery, that, that as with all operations, there are risks with the, the operations and we follow people up uh, closely to make sure that they don't have any problems. But the things that can occur after this type of surgery include things like bleeding uh, and infection. Um, and more specific to inguinal hernia surgery, people can get uh, issues with the nerves that are in the groin and they can either experience some numbness where the hernia was or in a small proportion of people, they can have what we call chronic pain, which is long-standing pain. Um, which for most people, if, they, if it does occur, is, is usually fairly minor twinges when they're moving. But in a small, small proportion of people, it can be uh, a significant issue, even requiring sometimes the intervention of a pain specialist. So people do need to be mindful that although it's what we would regard as routine, very common surgery, that there are issues that can occur with it. And then the final thing to say is that despite... Uh, mesh repairs, keyhole repairs or open repairs, whichever way you do it, uh, being a gold standard repair, um, there is still a chance of the hernia coming back again. Um, but the majority, as, as I say, of our patients who have this type of surgery have it because they've been getting symptoms from their hernia, which are relieved by the operation. And, and the majority of our patients are very happy with the outcome and then can get on with a normal uh, active life following their surgery.